Hey guys, Rob here with 3D Printscape. Today I'm going to show you how to change the nozzle on your TAS machines. Um, this should apply for pretty much all the TAS machines out there, so the Mini, the new Workhorse, etc. And a lot of what I'm talking about here also applies to pretty much changing the nozzle on any printer, with the exception of I tend to move these fans out of the way. Um, that's not always going to be needed on other printers. Like if you have your Ender 3, you don't have to move any fans or anything out of the way. Uh, you do have to remove the front cover, but I did a video on how to change the nozzle on that. So if you're interested, uh, I'll link to it in the description below. All right, so first thing you're going to need is a couple tools. You're going to need a, some wrenches for the nozzle size that you're working with. Um, I'm taking off a brass one and I'm putting a hardened steel one on. So they are two different size and so I needed two different wrenches. Uh, you're going to need some sort of vice grips or a larger wrench that's big enough to uh, go around the heat block. Uh, I like vice grips uh, just because I can adjust them. And then of course uh, the nozzle itself. And I did want to make a note, if you're working with printers like this or some of the non-standard ones, make sure you get the right thread size. Um, the thread on this, which is meant for the TAS printer, is different than the thread on this one right here, which is meant for your standard Ender 3. Uh, so just make sure that you're aware that the nozzles do have different um, threading and they are not compatible with each other. If you end up putting this on your TAS, it'll go in like halfway and then you're going to get a filament um, seeping through midway through your print and it's going to end badly. Um, I did want to make a note that by default, the TAS does come with a hardened steel nozzle. They are more expensive, but that's what I'm replacing it with as well. Um, I think this one nozzle is the same price as like 15 or 20 of the little brass ones. Those ones are cheap or copper. Um, so just keep that in mind, but I'm going to be printing some things coming up with carbon fiber. Well, PLA carbon fiber, uh, not quite carbon fiber, but you know what I mean. Um, but it's very abrasive and will destroy your standard nozzle if you don't have a hardened steel one. So just keep that in mind. If you're only printing standard PLA or really soft filaments, you're fine with the copper or brass. Uh, but if you go into anything abrasive, you will need to get a hardened steel one like this. All right, so let's go ahead and get started. Uh, before we jump into this, make sure you guys hit that like button and subscribe. Uh, again, it'll really help this channel out and I appreciate it. All right, so the first thing I'm gonna do uh, is I'm gonna remove this fan and this fan duct cover right here just so I have better access to uh, the heat block so that I can actually get my vice grips in there. Uh, in a second here, I'm gonna zoom the camera in so you can actually see what I'm working on. Um, but I've tried to uh, do it without going that route and I ended up breaking the cables or um, I guess damaging, I didn't really break it, but damaged the cables going to the thermidor and had to replace it. Um, and I did a video on that a couple weeks back. I'll link to it in the description below if you ever do have that happen. But that was a $20 mistake on my part, but it is what it is. Um, just learn from my mistakes and don't try to work around what's there. Just take the fans uh, off so you can actually get in there to work. All right, so let's go ahead and zoom in and get started. All right, guys, I zoomed in as good as I can so I can get the best angle possible for you guys. So what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and start up the printer and uh, start preheating the uh, actual hot end. So we're going to want to heat that to about 20 or 30 degrees higher than what we're typically printing with. So if you're printing PLA around 205, 210, you're going to want to go up to like 230, 240. Uh, if you're printing ABS, uh, it'd probably be closer to 280, 290. But I'm going to go ahead and just take this to 240. And then while it's preheating, I am going to uh, go ahead and take this fan and fan duct cover off. So I'm going to go ahead and get started with that. First thing is uh, power on your printer. Then go to temperature, nozzle, and set that to 240. Or whatever temperature you need to set it to. And then while that's going, like I said, I'm going to go ahead and start taking this piece off. Uh, make sure that you have the actual extruder at a decent distance off of the bed so you can actually get in there and work. Uh, if not, you're going to have some issues, but I'm pretty good where I have it right now. Alright, so to take the fan off here, it's going to be two screws right here, then there'll be two screws on the cover. So let's just go ahead and undo those. And 
and just kind of put that off to the side a little bit just so it's not in the way. And then you gotta do the same thing here. And actually that's a different size Allen wrench. So let me grab that. All right, so now that I got the right size here, we'll go ahead and undo these two. And again, this is just making it so I can get access to the heat block without any issues. And I guess now's a good time to add the warning. Um, obviously we are heating this to 240 and starting to work around the area. So just be careful not to touch the uh, heating block because, well, it's gonna be hot. All right, now that's out of the way. So now we actually have good access into here and I can actually grab that with my vice grips and then I'll get in there with the wrench to undo these. So let's give it a second to get up to temperature and then we'll get started. All right guys, we're pretty much up to temperature. So I'm going to go ahead and um, get a good grip on the heating block. Now again, I'm gonna stress this. This block is gonna be very hot, so do not touch it. All right, so I can get in here. Again, I'm wanting to make sure that I do not over um, tighten this when I'm actually grabbing it and that I'm not hitting any of the cables because that will end up badly. And I'm probably gonna have to get over to this side to get this nozzle off, so sorry about the camera angles. All right, I got that nozzle out. I just kind of dropped it off to the side here so it'll cool down. Um, again, I know I'm repeating myself quite a bit here, but this stuff is hot. Uh, do not touch it uh, until it cools down, unless you will burn yourself. And I'm gonna take this off really quick while I do a couple things. So one thing I wanted to do um, while I was in here, I'm having to replace the nozzle because it's jammed. Um, so I wanna go through and uh, pull out the filament and just kind of clean out inside of the hot end with this little needle thing I have here. Uh, so we're gonna do that really quick just to make sure that we're good when we go to use it. So this is just going to be taking the filament out and just kind of uh, pushing in here and getting any filament all the way pushed through or pulled out. So I'm still not able to get through here. I'm going to go ahead and bring the temperature up a bit more so I can get in there a little bit easier. Hopefully it'll melt everything out. Right. I'm still having some issues here, so I'm going to raise this extruder so I can kind of go in from the bottom, see if that helps. Right. So I was able to clear out most of it. There's a big chunk like this in there as well. So um, that was blocking a lot of what I was doing. So now when it's cleared out, you should be able to take this and go all the way through without the tip in there, then get any extra filament that's in there and just kind of wipe it out. All right, that's looking pretty good now. I'm gonna go ahead and lower the temperature a little bit. Um, go back down like 260. And I'm just gonna put the nozzle on at this height um, you'll probably be at the same height you were before if you didn't have to do all this cleaning out. Uh, but again, it was necessary for me. All right, now we can go ahead and get the new nozzle prepped. So um, go ahead and just kind of put this on there a little bit. But All right, so I was able to just get that in there and just start at the thread a little bit. Uh, then I'll use the wrench to do the rest. I need to actually grab this now because it spun a little bit. Now we want to tighten it. We want to get it as flush with the heating block as possible. So we've got a little bit to go here.
All right, now we got that tight. Go ahead and disconnect this guy. All right, that looks pretty good. All right, so next thing I wanna do here is we'll, I'll zoom out a little bit for you guys and we'll go ahead and um, load the filament. So just go to change filament, it's not main. Preheat PLA. Now just keep, be careful to keep this fan out of the way a little bit. Um, if you want to, you could have went ahead and put the fan duct cover and the fan back on. Uh, I didn't yet. I wanted to make sure I have no issues with the filament feed before I do that. So that's why I went this route. Alright, so it's technically doing an unload right now because it thinks it still has filament, which it doesn't. And then as soon as it's ready for the load, we'll go ahead and feed it. And then hopefully we'll get a clean purge and then we'll know the nozzle switch was good. Alright, so let's go ahead and put this back in now. Should be able to feed it most of the way in and then lock it and go ahead and hit the button like we're supposed to and not sure if you can see in the camera but we have a nice clean line of filament coming out uh, it's not going to hung up on anything so i think we're good to go so the next step is going to be um, we got to put the fan duct cover back on and then the fan uh, if you left the fan off through this point uh, before you hit finish uh, filament change put it back on and then put the fan back on because it's going to move again I don't want to worry about that yeah so here's what I'm talking about don't hit in filament change yet go and put the fan back together all right so we want to make sure that goes in the same way uh, so the two without the threaded part will go here and we'll put these screws back in and then the fan will connect to the threaded part on the cover. Now we wanna make sure the airflow is going the same way it was before. So we wanna have uh, the actual label facing inward. Sorry, it's an awkward angle to work here. All right, now that that's done, we can go ahead and end filament change. Get this crap off. All and then we can go ahead and turn it back off or start your print or whatever the case may be. All right, guys, so that's the process to change the filament on your TAS printers. Uh, like I said, most of it applies to pretty much any printer across the board that's using a uh, nozzle or FDM type printer. Um, it's not difficult. I know there's a little bit more to it this time because I was also cleaning out the hot end, uh, but I just had a clog, so I had to do it. Um, make sure uh, you get the right nozzle. Um, like I mentioned, not all of them have the same threading, so uh, make sure you are getting the right one or it's gonna end quite badly. Uh, if you have any questions, go ahead and leave a comment below. I'll try to get back to you as soon as I can.